everybody's blue ducky and I'm super super excited just got in the mail ever after high San Diego Comic-Con 2015 Raven Queen exclusive and it came from Toots Toys and it came really really quick so thank you so much to Toots Toys for sending it so promptly it's awesome box I haven't opened it up yet I'm gonna be opening it up uh, with you guys so you'll see my reaction firsthand and please remember if you are a new viewer to hit that subscribe button so this outer box is massive and on both sides it's the same um, design and on the edges there's like I don't know it's like a, a I don't know <laughs> I don't know how to describe it like a um, you know iron box but it just it's made out of cardboard but it looks like iron it's really cool and I love that they did the Ever After High logo in Raven Queen's colors. I want to show you real quick how this box opened up it's like not just like a uh, regular box these actually unhinge that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna slide her out with you guys so you can see her in all her glory set her down and um, look at the back of the box okay so uh, let me set up so you can see it okay, so here's a look at the front of her amazing box with this beautiful portrait and Raven Queen and then instead of being daughter of the evil queen she is the evil queen here's a look at the back of her box I love this artwork it is so pretty and her box says once upon a time Raven Queen's mother the evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves dared to go beyond her story she invaded fairy tale after fairy tale intending to rule them all under her wicked boot heel eventually she was defeated and imprisoned inside of the very magic mirror she once treasured so much. However, there are two sides to every story. Even though the kind-hearted Raven didn't want to follow in her villainous mother's footsteps, she always wondered if she was told the whole truth. If Raven ever did attempt her death's... Di <laughs> oh, sorry. If Raven ever did accept her destiny, perhaps she might find the answer she's been looking for on the other side of the looking glass. Check that artwork out. Amazing, amazing, amazing job to the artist. On the box here it has who the doll designer is, the writer, the character artist, the packaging designer, and packaging engineer. To all those people you outdid yourself this packaging is amazing oh and illustration on the end there can't forget that so to those people you did such a good job now I'm gonna try and figure out how to open her box up I see a little pull tab here I believe or uh, um, oh yeah I see just slide that out and oh this comes out which is pretty cool and then there she is revealed and all her beautiful gorgeous amazing outfit and everything um oh she looks so cool in the package you know what guys I usually never open up my San Diego comic-con exclusive dolls but I think I am going to open up this Raven Queen just so we can look at her really close up. Um, yeah, and I kind of want to, I just want to touch those feathers, to be honest. So I'm going to cut the video now and make, so I can figure out how to open the packaging the nicest way. So maybe she can go back in it. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I got her out of the box and really awesome that it was it was really easy to open up the box and find where the stand was she does come with a stand and it's like a black uh, ever after high stand just the standard 
dull stands you get with Ever After High. But whoever thought it was a good idea to put those little ties in her head on this doll, like, I almost had a heart attack, like, trying to cut the ties without cutting any feathers and without damaging the box. But it all went well, and she has no damage, and the box is fine, so I just had a small heart attack when I saw those ties. I was like, no! Anyway, she is gorgeous, 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 amazing, even better out of the box. So, um, yeah, let's get started at looking at her up close. Here's an up close look at Raven Queen's uh, makeup. She has very dramatic dark teal makeup and a plummy color lipstick. And look at this. Wait, the feathers are getting in the way. But look, she has real rooted eyelashes. Please just do this for every doll. I love dolls with real rooted eyelashes and they make her look so stunning. And then she has like a subtle blush. Next we'll take a look at this amazing headpiece that like goes into a cowl and a necklace and a chest piece. It's just like this massive silver, you know, accessory that is just really, really cool. It has the raven skull on the top with jewels and like silver spikes and then silver feathers and then it goes down and you have the uh, raven skull again and it kind of almost looks a little bit tribal with the, all the beads but it's in silver so it makes it more evil queen and as you can see she has real feathers and they're black and they're purple and they're really really cool I'll spin her around because you can see her feathers from the back better than you can from the front and they all hook into this um, leather piece right there and this is actually her hair coming down so she has like two braids in the front right here and right here and then the rest is loose out the back which I like I like her uh, I really, really like her braids in the front. They're really cool. Um, as far as her hair goes, it's pretty standard colors. She does have, it looks like, a little tinsel in there. Um, I'm trying, I, I, I'm going to do a doll comparison so you can see how it's, her hair is different or similar to the signature uh, Raven Queen um, at the end of this video. So make sure to stick around for that doll comparison. And then her, she's holding this uh, poison apple, which like looks like a skull. So if I was like Snow White or Apple White and someone handed me an apple that looked like this, I definitely wouldn't bite it. But I think Apple White would because she'd be like, oh goody, now I can fulfill my destiny. <laughs> like uh, that pretty much spells out poison apple there. And then her dress is this a gorgeous mermaid style dress and it's black and then she has these long sleeves which you can see are jagged and they have black feather pattern on them and they're kind of sheer and flowy I have a fan on so that's why you see the uh, feathers moving but it kind of like gives her that like model model blowing wind in the face kind of thing and then she also has this ring and bracelet that is silver chains. I just noticed this little detail about this poison apple. It actually hooks around her two fingers like a ring. So it, you know, um, sticks to her hand better. I still have the rubber band on uh, so it doesn't fall off. But it's like a ring so she can hold it really well. And on both hands, she's wearing black gloves. And then going down into the bottom of her dress into this mermaid skirt part, is the black fabric ends in a like jagged, like uh, ripped, torn kind of looking way. And then 
you get this really sparkly, glittery, uh, sequin fabric. Not really sequins, but it's really, really glittery, as you can see. All those glitter. Uh, I'm mesmerized by all the glitter. I love it. Here is a look at her shoes, which I have a point to bring out in the doll comparison in just a second, but they look feathery with chains down the front. Very cool, all black shoes. Okay, so now I've come to the doll comparison portion of this review. And I have Throne Coming Raven Queen, the Comic-Con exclusive Raven Queen, Signature Raven Queen, Legacy Day Raven Queen, and uh, We to Wonderland Raven Queen to compare with you guys. Now I do know that these are not all the Raven Queens that are out there. I do not own like every single one. I think I'm missing the Getting Fairest one. If there's more, I'm sure you guys will let me know which ones those are. But for these five dolls, we're going to do a quick doll comparison. Quick look at the makeup. This is Throne Coming Raven Queen, and she has silver and purple eyeshadow with purple lipstick. Here's a look at the Comic-Con Raven Queen, which I just showed you guys. But she by far has the most dramatic eye makeup. A very dark turquoise color, lots of glitter, and a... Um, Kind of a reddish wine color lipstick. Her signature Raven Queen, which she has a combination of a kind of um, a light purple pink color uh, eyeshadow with a little bit of silver there and a dark wine color lipstick. Here is Legacy Day Raven, which is, she has purple and teal eyeshadow like the San Diego Comic Con exclusive but her eyeshadow is a lot it's lighter um, and not as dramatic and then she has purple lipstick and then here is way to Wonderland Raven Queen and she has blue and teal eyeshadow and then she has uh, the most red lipstick out of all of them but um She's a little different from the other Raven Queens in her eyeshadow and uh, the fact that she has purple eyebrows instead of the brown eyebrows like everybody else. Uh, point that I'd like to uh, point out <laughs> is that they all, all the Ravens except for Throne Coming have some sort of head crown or headdress, the crown, this a uh, crown, I guess that you could call that, and then the Way to Wonderland has that really lime color crown. But I think out of all of the crowns, um, my favorite probably is going to be the San Diego Comic Con one because it's just so elaborate. It goes all around her head and has lots of detail. For similarity, I just noticed while looking at uh, all of the ravens that I have, is they all have some sort of like cow neck piece. Um, the San Diego Comic Con is those feathers and I kind of include the silver feathers in the cowl neck piece because it goes up around her neck and head and then finally the throne coming raven has that huge dragon like one um, so in all her different doll forms she kind of like always has that that sheep kind of neck thing. So if you look at them all together, you can see that Raven Queen really sticks to her colors. Purple, black, and silver are, you know, they all fit together. The only one that kind of sticks out is Way to Wonderland because they added that lime green. But other than purple, black, and silver, her favorite other color to add is that te teal color which they did a lot of on the Way to Wonderland Raven Queen, but with the eyeshadow and um, also on the Legacy Day, she has a little bit of that teal in her mask. And she also really likes glitter. Look at that Legacy Day glitter, uh, exclusive glitter um, on the signature Raven, her black top has a little bit of glitter there. 
you can see. And um, for the Legacy Day Raven, she has lots of glitter on her cape. And also that teal color added in. Uh, Way to Wonderland Raven doesn't really have glitter. But like I said, she kind of is like an oddball in the, the Raven Queen dolls. She kind of just sticks out a little weird. Uh, in the review part of this video, when I was checking out the Comic-Con Raven, I was like, hmm, I just noticed something about her shoes. So check it out. The left side is Comic-Con Raven, and the right side is Signature Raven. She has the same shoes, except they didn't add the silver paint to the chain part. On the exclusive one, which is a bit funny because you would think they would do that little extra detail. Um, but yeah, she has the same shoes as ex uh, Signature Raven. I also wanted to check out the Comic Con hair next to Signature Raven hair. And I was gonna say, it looks like Signature Raven has a lot more black in her hair, but I think it's because the purple has been pulled into this ponytail. And she does have. I don't know, there's not much black in the Comic-Con uh, Raven's hair, but she does have the added tinsel to her hair. But other than that, it's like the same colors. There's that little variations of purple in here, which they also have in the signature. So, uh, the signature's hair seems a lot longer, but I'm not sure if that is just because... Comic-Con Raven has these braids, but I think it might be a little bit shorter. And after looking at each doll's hair a little more, I think uh, the Comic-Con and Throne Coming Raven have the same hair more than any of the other dolls. Their hair mostly resembles each other um, because it has the same sort of tool and the colors and is well not design, but the colors and the tool um, match each other. So I wanted to line the dolls up real quick in like order of how they appeared in the show. So I think it's Signature Raven, then the Throne Coming episode. No, no, never mind. A uh, Signature Raven, then the second one is the Legacy Day episode, and then third is Throne Coming. Then I'm not sure how the last two order in webisodes because they haven't happened yet. I haven't seen them yet, but I'm pretty sure she's going to look like way too Wonderland before she looks like, um, you know, uh, San Diego Comic-Con Raven Queen, the Evil Queen, Raven Queen, the Evil Queen. So what do you guys think of these all Raven Queens? I still think the Way to Wonderland looks way out of place because, you know, she's pretty consistent through color scheme except for that Way to Wonderland one, which kind of sticks out. But I still like her even though she, like, sticks out like a sore thumb. So which one is your favorite incarnation of Raven Queen? Signature, Legacy Day, Throne Coming, Way to Wonderland, or Comic-Con exclusive? Um, I'm gonna say my favorite is the Comic-Con one. I just love, because Rooted Eyelashes won, the real feathers, and just the amazing detail in her dress and her accessories won me over as my favorite Raven I own. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite Raven is. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please give this video a thumbs up. If you like Ever After High, if you like Raven Queen, and finally, if you are a new viewer, like I said at the beginning, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my toy videos, and I will see you guys later. Bye!